In this video, I'm gonna talk about how to create a LUT from a look that you may have developed inside of Nuke and you want to take that look, create a LUT out of it so that way it can be applied elsewhere, say in other scripts or other programs, or even inside of a camera. So a few examples here, be generating a LUT from a look that I've created, applying that LUT or any particular LUT you might have that you have received from a client or if you have other LUTs you created yourself and how to apply those to footage inside of Nuke. And then talk about match grade, how to pull a LUT from a match grade. And then just because I ran into this recently, a little extra bonus, I'm gonna talk about how to create a LUT out of Nuke so that way you can import it into the RE color tool and create a .aml file for the RE cameras to use the LUT in camera. Let's go ahead and get started. So here I have an image, as you can see on screen here, and I've gone through, I've added, I've darkened this up a little here, changed the color, try to pull out some color uh, from the image, and then just added a vignette to that. So I am by no means a colorist, so don't judge me by my coloring skills. This is just uh, for demonstration here. All right, so at this point, say I like this look that I have on here, I want to create a LUT from it, okay? So what we have to do is we're gonna generate LUT and all the LUT options can either be found under 3D LUT here, generate LUT, vector field, or of course you can always hit tab on the keyboard and, and type those in and search for those. All right, so what's gonna happen if I try to generate a LUT directly from my look here? I'll show you. So I have generate LUT here. I have my file path of where I wanna save my LUT. I'm using a dot cube extension only because I plan to use this LUT later on for my RE uh, example and RE needs to use a dot cube from new to, to be able to work. But you also have these other options, dot 3DL, dot BLVT, CMS, CSP, so on and so forth. So depending on what uh, format you actually need, you'll be able to select from one of these. Okay. By default, uh, generate LUT comes in as logarithmic. So this really just depends on what color space or you intend to be using this LUT in or workspace. So I'm actually just be using it in linear. It's just easier for me. I am reading in raw, I'm gonna write out raw. And we'll just work that way. So I'm gonna generate this LUT and we'll see what happens. Generate the LUT, it's right into my file path. Okay, that's done, it's fairly quick. I'm gonna call in the vector field node. This is how I load in my LUTs. LUT files that I might have, vector field. I'm gonna apply it to my image. And we just load that in there in my LUT cube. So let's take a look at that and see what it looks like to the vector field. Oh my goodness, that's nothing what I was looking at and why did that happen? Okay, well first of all, it happened because I tried to generate a LUT directly from my script here, my little look script. And that's not what we want to do. We actually need to create a CMS test pattern, substitute that for our source or our footage before we can go ahead and create a look. So let's try that now. So now this is going through here. We're seeing this, we'll change this here through the grades. So, and then I'm gonna create, generate this load again and just reload it in my vector field. Reload that. Let's take a look through there now. Like, okay, that's close, but it's it's really looking posturized and that's not what I want either. That looks nothing like my original um, grade here. Okay. Well, part of the reason being is, the reason why it's looking like this is because I've added on like these extra bits here as far as creating a, a separate grade just for the Rialto bridge. So I'm gonna disable that. And then also because I've added the vignette uh, as well, so I'm gonna disable that. All right, so now I just have a straight, you know, kind of color correction that I have on my footage using my color correct thing here. So with those two disabled, I'm gonna connect back to my CMS test pattern, generate the LUT again, go back to my vector field, reload that. Take a look now. So I'm viewing through my vector field and it looks exactly now just like it would through the end of this uh, script right here. So I'm A being back and forth, we're not seeing any changes, so great. I've generated my LUT, which is right here. It's reading through the vector field and I'm looking through it right there. At this point then, I can then apply um, on top of that my grade for just the, bre uh, the bridge separately and the vignette. 
So moving on, this is pretty much uh, reiterating how to apply a LUT. So I have a different piece of footage here. If I look at it, same, same type of area, same time of day. Um, it's not the greatest looking thing. It's just shot on an iPhone. But um, I want to apply my LUT that I just created from the Rialto bridge. So I'm going to load that in here. It's already loaded. And just hit reload just so make sure there wasn't an older one there and i'm going to view through this vector fit now so we can kind of see you know it made a little bit of a difference uh, as far as bringing out the colors and saturation and stuff like that trying to keep it consistent with sort of like this look over here same same tones and stuff like that so that's how you would apply a lot that you might have to um your footage all right so moving on, now what I'm gonna do is say we didn't create a look, but we want to kind of copy a look that may have already been created. In this example, I'll be using this footage here. This is gonna be my source that I want to add a look to or add a color LUT to. And this is what I'm gonna be trying to copy from is this image here. So if I drop in a match grade node, you can just type in match grade. The match grade node will come in. I want to connect my graded source, which would be this image we're currently looking at. Oops, go back over. Connect it to there. And then the source that I want to take that look to and transfer it over to. And that would be that one. So by default, when I drag or when I create my match grade um, node, these are the settings right here. Um, it's the task. If I were to be comparing the exact same image, just one that's graded and one that's not graded, I'd want to use the default setting of match graded source. But because I'm trying to match two different shots or two different images, I want to use match a different clip. Okay. Now I have the option to mask stuff out if I don't want certain areas to be considered in my analysis, but I'm just going to leave it uh, default right now. And my output, I'm going to, I want to be the matched. The final result. What I have to do is first create a keyframe on the source of the area that I'm trying to match it to, or the image I'm trying to match it to, which would be this, as well as my target, which is right here, on that frame. So if this was an animated uh, sequence or is moving, had motion in it, I'd want to keyframe the key areas where my, the light might change or the scene might change, and also the areas I want those applied to on the source or the target, I should say. All right, so moving on, I'm gonna create just a 3D LUT. You have the option of a CDL. It's gonna leave this as auto detect for the pre-LUT. Let that deal with it itself. Now I'm changing the resolution here just because um, once again, I might be using this for the RE example and the RE needs a 33 to the third mesh um, resolution. So I'm just changing that to 33. Uh, color space RGB, right UV, LAB, I'll just leave it as RGB. Iterations, this is really like the quality that you're gonna get out of it. So the smaller the number, the faster it's gonna take to analyze. The larger the number, uh, it's gonna be a little bit slower, but you're gonna get more accurate results. So I'm just gonna bump this up because I want more accurate results and I'll say 24 iterations. Well, it goes to 20, I guess 20 is the max limit. I'm gonna hit analyze frames now at this point. Okay. Once I've done that, I actually just have that already done here. So I'll just open up this one. I am gonna export out that information I just created, uh, set my file path of where I wanna send this to. It's gonna write it as a CSP file, .csp file, that's fine. And once I have that written out, it gives me the option to create an OCIO file transform. So I'm gonna click that button and you'll see it creates this little OCIO file transform node. Great. So when I look through this now, it's gonna actually apply that information to this um, shot. So if I look at it now, it's gonna look something like that. It's basically just taking the tones of this, even though it's not the same shot, and it's applying it to this. I mean, it may not look the greatest for this particular shot, but at least you get those same tones. This looks more like kind of like um, an art piece now, you know, a bad art piece, I guess, but you can see how the match grade um, pulling the left from the match grade can be applied now towards other shots and give them at least a same color palette uh, as the shot that they're trying to match to. All right. So from here, 
This is where you'd want to generate a LUT again if you want it as a different file format. If you have to use something other than a .csp, then you would once again, you know, determine which, what type of file format you want to use for that and write that out. Moving on, this may not be for everyone, so you can go ahead and stop the video here. That's all I'm going to really talk about as far as the LUT creation out of Nuke and using the match grade to create a LUT. Now this part right here is something I came into where a client wanted to take a look that they have in Nuke, create a LUT for it that they can add to their RE camera so they can shoot directly from the camera without LUT applied. Now there was just a few requirements for the RE color tool and need to be a .cube file from Nuke and um, a mesh resolution of 33 cubed, I guess you could say, or 33 to the third. So what we have to do here is we'll have a CMS test pattern, of course, so we can generate our LUT using the vector field to call in the LUT that we want to use or to convert over. Um, I've added a clamp on here because another requirement is that in the RE color tool, it needs to be like linear. So it needs to be, the values need to be zero and between zero and one. Uh, some of these values on this particular light go into the negative numbers and some go to positive one or more than one. Now, rather than um, trying to normalize that information, I just threw a clamp on there just to clamp the values at zero, between zero and one and leave it at that. So from there, just generate this LUT and we'll go ahead and write that's LUT2. All right, great. Now, if I go into my RE color tool and I pull in that, that um, LUT I just created. So let's look here, open LUT, LUT file, LUT2, open, and there it is. So that look I created from the other scenes in the nuke script is now inside of the re color tool and then from here all i need to do is save look as it's going to allow me to save it as a .aml file then this .aml file can be loaded onto an re camera so hopefully that stuff was helpful for you if um, you have any questions feel free to ask them in the comments and if you have any requests as far as which videos you'd like to see just go ahead and put that in the uh, comments as well thanks a lot